Freedom of Russia Legion addressed the residents of Kursk Oblast, calling on them to write petitions to Putin. Russian volunteers fighting on the side of the Ukrainian armed forces drew the attention of Kursk residents to the fact that the Bucha scenario that the Kremlin propagandists were expecting did not materialize in their region. Civilians are not lying by the roads but are writing petitions to Putin asking for help, the LSR telegram channel indicated. Russian volunteers reminded their compatriots that Putin did not save the residents of Belgorod region, on whose heads cabs from Russian army bombers have been falling for several months. Bad news. Putin won't help you, but we can. They promised at Freedom of Russia. LSR called on residents of the Kursk region to record the movements of Russian troops on photos and videos and send them to them. Recall, a counter-terrorism operation regime has been implemented in the Bryansk, Kursk and Belgorod regions of Russia. Moscow cites an increased threat from Ukraine as the reason for these measures, according to the Russian National Anti-Terrorism Committee and acting governor of Kursk region, Alexei Smirnov. The Russian side reports that the decision to implement the counter-terrorism operation regime in the Bryansk region was made by the local FSB office led by Major General S. V. Voronin. Russia National Anti-Terrorism Committee statement cites increased levels of sabotage and terrorist threats from Ukraine as the reason for these measures. Additionally, the announcement includes notifying interacting security forces and local authorities in the region. Similarly, the authorities of the Kursk region have also announced the implementation of the counter-terrorism operation regime in the area for comparable reasons. By the decision of the National Anti-Terrorism Committee, due to the increased level of sabotage and terrorist threats from Ukraine, the counter-terrorism operation regime has been introduced in the Kursk region, the Kursk governor posted. The Russian National Anti-Terrorism Committee has also announced the implementation of the counter-terrorism operation regime in the Belgorod region. The National Anti-Terrorism Committee statement describes an unprecedented attempt by Ukraine to destabilize the situation in several regions of Russia. The committee notes that additional measures are being introduced in the three regions to enhance anti-terrorist security. Bloomberg has called the Ukrainian breakthrough of the Russian border in Kursk Oblast the first case since World War II when the army of another country invaded Russia. According to Bloomberg, up to a thousand Ukrainian troops have entered Kursk Oblast. This is the first time since World War II that the troops of another country have entered Russia. Bloomberg also reports that Putin summoned his subordinates to explain the situation recently. And Russian mill bloggers accused the officials of incompetence. The news agency also suggests that this situation is likely to reinforce Kiev's argument that American and European allies should not be afraid of the Kremlin's threats of escalation, but instead should allow Ukraine to fight in any way it can to speed up the end of the war. Bloomberg believes that this episode has exposed the fragility of Russia's border defenses, undermined the Kremlin's image of Putin as a protector of ordinary Russians and boosted Ukrainian morale. Despite Kiev not officially confirming its activities in the Kursk region, the fighting there indicates three main objectives of Ukraine, according to the Telegraph. It is noted that in less than two days of fighting in the Kursk region, Russia has lost control of 350 square kilometers of its territory. Additionally, dozens of Russians are reportedly captured by Ukrainian forces. Although Ukraine has not officially confirmed its control over the situation in the Kursk region, the fighting there indicates three key objectives of Ukraine. The first is to divert Russian forces from offensive operations in Donetsk. Over the past week, Russia made significant advances in this direction and approached the village of New York. Since Russia has not achieved success in the Kharkiv direction, the Russian troops could redirect even more conscripts to Donetsk in the coming weeks. The Kursk offensive operation complicates this process. The second is to sow discord within Russia. Since the beginning of 2023, Russia has resumed minor offensive actions in Ukraine, which is why so-called pro-Ukrainian Russian partisans have periodically conducted incursions into Russian territory and briefly occupied several border settlements in Belgorod. In March 2024, these operations expanded to Kursk. These actions aimed to undermine the increasingly fragile sense of security in Russia and show the Russian public that the war could come to them as well.
The third objective is to advance the negotiations on territorial exchanges during future talks. Leaks indicate that Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky reportedly considered occupying Russian villages as a means to pressure Moscow. Specifically, discussions are underway about exchanging land plots between Kharkiv and Kursk. Although it is unclear whether Ukraine will be able to hold the villages in the Kursk region, the offensive has shown that breaching Russian territory is easier than destroying Russian fortifications in eastern Ukraine. The assault on Kursk demonstrates that Russia has not learned lessons from the rapid capture of Rostov by Wagner forces during the June 2023 mutiny. Besides the anticipated threats to destroy Ukraine and the use of tactical nuclear weapons, Russia has not provided any significant response to the Kursk offensive.